you talked about uh, needing three running backs to make yourself feel comfortable, and your third one came up big play. He did, and um, I thought it was uh, – Gabe is very capable. It's tough to play as a freshman at any college, let alone uh, Division One school. And then on top of that, a Division One school whose culture – I mean, our culture is pretty heavy, and that's what keeps us buoyant. And uh, he has just absorbed all of it, probably because folks like Hope Adebayo and Josh Comas and Sean Shipman have been some of his best mentors, and they're the guys competing with him. And I think that speaks to, you know, we saw the same thing when Jordan Roberts came in, and, and uh, competitors want to compete at the highest level, and they want to compete against the best. So if the best is in his locker room and you can make him better, they do that. But uh, I, I wasn't just... It, it wasn't just uh, coach speak saying, you know, three tailbacks and other offenses might be different, but um, it, it's what we will continue to recruit on. That run he made and then the uh, touchdown after that in the fourth quarter was huge because it seemed like you guys were kind of on the brink of, are we going to get this done or not? For sure. Um, it, we talked at halftime. I mean, the, for, for Drake to score right before half, we know if you followed us that that's a predictor of success, right, for, to get a score before half. And they did that. And I thought it was tremendous for them, but it really put, with that missed extra point, made the game a lot different. You go into halftime and it's 20 to 7 or something like that, it, very similar to last week where you can come out and play the second half much differently. Um, but as we also said at halftime, you know, we've been in that locker room for many, many, many games that were much like that. And what it was going to take was, you know, there are people that allow the outcome to sway their emotion and their attitude. That can't be us. We need our emotion and our attitude to sway the outcome. And I think that's what our guys did in the second half. But it was a murky. I think that was probably the best word I can use. And it's going to be. I mean, uh, no one wants to hear it when we say it, but you were, we are, if you play a St. Thomas, you are going to get everybody's best shot. And with what's been going on around here on that field the last year and a half, we're not sneaking up on anybody. And as our coaches outlined throughout the week, uh, that is a privilege, right? That is a privilege that we have earned, but it's also a daunting task when these tough teams come in here. Uh, hats off to Drake. I think their coach did a tremendous job. They graduated a lot of guys last year. And I think he got his guys to play very, very hard in a season. I'm not devoid of the obvious. I know that it's not what they wanted. I get that. But I think uh, I think Coach did a great job, and I told him that after the game. Do you still feel all that you guys weren't at your A game today? No, I felt like we were a B, like an 83, yeah. you know, somewhere between a B and a B minus. Um, but that's also um, – I knew it – I knew that the – outcome no matter what would have happened the outcome would not have made anybody feel like they felt at four o'clock last saturday yeah. i get that right but again that's why you can't focus on the outcome you can focus on the process and this week practice last week's week of practice was um gross at least two of the three major days it was gross mm -hmm. and that in part was because they do a really good job that team at at making you practice different ways of stuff that you're not used to, right? Um, but I thought the way that they approached it was really good. And, you know, there's there are many teams that I see every week that lose those games. And nowadays, they're losing the, 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 the differential is becoming less and less important. You're seeing teams every week, whether it's Saturdays or Sundays, um, Drop in 21-point leads. You saw a 23 in the NFL a couple weeks ago, 17-point leads, right? And a lot of that is because of the explosive and prolific offenses. And you need to feel comfortable being in the midst of the storm because even when you're up by a couple of scores, it's never safe. But, yeah, Gabe definitely capped it. If we could have done that one drive earlier, I think it, we probably would have felt a different, little differently about it, but we didn't. But he ran well, and he held on to the ball, and that's all we asked him to do. What's his skill set in terms of what he does well? So he's so different. I think a lot of people see him in the same body of like a Hope a bio, very similar body. And they say, oh, he's a younger version. It's like, man, 
that you could not have two more different kids in terms of their running styles, right? Um, Hope is a run behind his pads, low hip slasher. Uh, and Gabe is more the traditional tailback that can make you miss in a phone booth. Um, he also has tremendously good hands. So if you saw out there today, I think there were seven or eight reps where we were in a very heavy personnel grouping with tight ends and running backs, but then the coaches spread them all out <clears throat> because we feel that we can throw the ball to him. So he's definitely different. He's not quite as, he's a strong kid, but he's not quite as strong. I mean, Sean's 206 pounds. Hope is a bowling ball full of muscle like those guys are sophomores and juniors and they've been here and coach Haugen has gotten the chance to work with them um, but Gabe's learning and the fact that he's staying healthy I mean this is some big boy football and hits he's taken right and he's staying healthy I think is a, a tribute to his illusion I don't think that's a word but elusiveness right because kind of like a Walt Vogel you know just at the last minute they sort of know how to contort their body to not take the major hits <laughs> Did he play a lot because Hope is not yes, 100%? Yes, absolutely. And we started him for that reason, yeah. too, thinking that, um, you know, we, if we could get uh, through this week without uh, Hope shouldering more of the hits in the load, uh, that we wanted that to happen. So we also had Josh Comas in a quasi role, much like we did last week. Be, uh, Josh Comas, I think I said, because Sean was out as well. And uh, we'll have both of those guys back this week. But uh, it, it was done intentionally just to make sure that my number one job is to look out for the physical and mental well-being of our team. That is my number one job by far. It's not even close, Steve. And uh, our coaches and our staff take that really seriously. Hey, Coach. Yes, sir. How do you look going into next week as you head down to play uh, presentation? Uh, Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Yep. Sorry. Uh, that's what I mean. But, you know, you guys can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> but anyways, uh, how do you look looking to next week? The physical. You're, very, you're probably one of the smaller schools for, for D1, only 935. That they are. But you know what? Uh, you were in this same room in December of 2015 when we played a team called Wabash. Oh, yeah. Remember that? You were sitting right over there, two seats over. Yeah, sure. And that's a school with, with 930 kids. Yeah. And they came in ready to play. So, it, you know, I, size of the school, and obviously I've been on the other side of the conversation for a long time, but I don't buy into size of the school um, leaning towards you being a better team or a worse team. Oh, no. It probably makes me more nervous, the, the travel. Um, you know, this, this first part of the journey we're on, we still haven't been to all the places. And even it's going to take another year after this until we have, but not knowing what to expect. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal when you can't mentally, our, our kids will, will go to bed four or five of the seven nights a week with the mental imagery, trying to put themselves in a situation where they're making plays on the field. I think that leads to success on our field because we're familiar with it. It also leads to some really tough times if you don't have a vision of what that place is like. And so that, that makes me nervous. Um, but I will say Michael Armstrong is our director of football operations and he does an amazing job with the travel. And in addition to the team and moving them halfway across the country, he, he's got to deal with my questions like every hour about what's going on. So he does a great job. We're grateful to have him. I think you're a great coach, my friend. I appreciate that. you said, a real mensch. That's well, what you are, my friend. I appreciate that, but I'll and tell you, you know what. what a real mensch is. Look it up. The, um, the way that the guys have rallied just this last three, four weeks around each other makes it a fun group to coach. And it's not my job to have fun. It's my job to teach them life and to play football, but it's, it's made it really, really enjoyable to see. I think a lot of people would enjoy the, the role that we get to play. So thank you.